All right, what do we do with this integral? x times square root of x plus 3. Uh, this, is, this is kind of a funny one. In, in one sense, there is a substitution that suggests itself right away because we do have a function under the square root. There is a composition. Um, but, you know, the derivative of x plus 3 is, is 1. It's not x. So what's going to happen here? Well, when in doubt, try things, see what happens, right? So we see that there's this function under the square root. Why don't we substitute that? u is x plus 3. Okay. Well, then du is dx. Okay. Um, so then this is root u. This is du. But what do I do with the x? Oh, hang on. I can solve for it up here, right? x is u minus 3. So if I put all that in, what I get is u minus 3 times root u times du. All right, so why is this better? It's better because now the, the sort of complicated part is outside the square root rather than inside the square root. And with the square root kind of gone from the binomial, right, I can just use the distributive property to multiply through, right? This is u to the 1 half. So this is u times u to the 1 half, that's u to the 3 halves, minus 3 u to the 1 half. I can distribute like so. And now it's just a term by term antiderivative using the power rule, right? Adding 1 to 3 halves gives me u to the 5 halves. Dividing by 5 halves is the same thing as multiplying by 2 fifths. Okay, so now I have 3 times, so it's going to be u to the 3 halves. Divide by 3 halves, so I multiply by 2 thirds, plus c. And then we should get the answer back in terms of x, right? So 2 over 5, x plus 3 to the 5 over 2. Cancel those 3s, x plus 3 to the 3 halves, plus c. And you got it. All right, a little bit sneaky. Once you've seen a couple of these, though, you, you get the hang of it. You know what to do, right? Now, what about this one? Do we see an obvious composition? Not really, but we got some stuff in the denominator, right? So, so there maybe is a function going on there, right? There's a reciprocal function. So reciprocal of what? Are we doing the reciprocal of the whole thing? Well, let's once again kind of remember this other guiding principle we have, right? We look for composition, but we also look for, do we have one function whose derivative is sitting there? Um, what do we know with the derivative of the natural log? The derivative of the natural log is 1 over x. Uh, and oh, I have 1 over x, right? So I, once I see that, I see, oh yeah, I have this function is here. Its derivative is there. That says, why don't we just try substituting it and we'll see what happens. So if I let u be the natural log of x, then du is 1 over x times dx. So that means that this bit here is u. And everything else is du. So what I get is 1, 1 over u, that u is still in the bottom, times du. Okay. Oh, what's the antiderivative of 1 over u? It's the natural log. And what was u? Oh, it was also the natural log. So I get the log of the log of x plus c, and then I'm done.